Ephesians 3.12. Did you find it? In whom? How many of you know from the previous verse, he's talking about in Christ. Remember Brother Hagin always said, go through the New Testament with a highlighter and underline all the in Christ, in whom, in Him, through whom, by Him. You know, all those verses that talk about, and you'll get a great amount of revelation of what God has done for you. And this verse tells us one thing He's done for us. In whom, or in Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him, in whom we have boldness. <clears throat> How many of you know the Bible says in Proverbs 28, what is that, verse 1 or so, the righteous are as bold as lions. One of the characteristics of righteous people, according to uh, the Bible, is that they're bold. So there is such a thing as divine boldness. And I want to talk to you about it tonight, if I could. Um, really, we're in a time that uh, God wants to do more by His Spirit, reaping the great harvest of the days we're in. There's many people that need to be brought into the kingdom of God before Jesus comes. And uh, there's a lot of people have going to be assigned to do a lot of things. And there's going to be a lot of opposition against it. And uh, a lot of temptation to draw back. So who's going to get it done? The bold are going to get it done. The bold are going to get it done. Because it takes boldness to step out and obey God. It takes boldness. In fact, I'll be honest with you, the miraculous, one of the keys to the miraculous is boldness. A lot of times the, uh, the lack of the miraculous is not a lack of power being present or a lack of privilege on the part of the, the person involved, it's oftentimes just a lack of boldness. You can have knowledge of what God wants to do and, uh, and not have the boldness to step out on it and nothing will manifest. Amen. Amen. Uh, and we'll look at that maybe. We'll see how this goes here tonight. But really the Bible is the book of the bold. Not, not the cringing, not those that, that draw back and, and were fearful. I mean, Noah boldly built a boat when nobody had ever seen rain come out of the sky. And he preached about it for a hundred, they say usually, most people say a hundred years, 120 years. That's bold. Isn't that right? When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were being thrown into the burning fire, were getting ready to be thrown into the burning fiery furnace, and the king said, well, I'll give you one more chance here. And they said, well, king, uh, we're not afraid to answer you and just say, you know, uh, whether you do this or not, we're, we're not going to bow. Uh, besides, God's going to deliver us. They boldly said, God will deliver us out of this burning, fiery furnace. That takes boldness. Amen. And so the Bible is the book of the bold, not the cringing. <laughs> the Bible... In fact, the last warning in the Bible in Revelation 21.8 is a warning to the cowardly and the unbelieving, one translation says. One other translation says the fearful. Fear is the opposite of boldness. Amen. I know you wanted to come and hear a Christmas sermon tonight, but just, just let, me, let me follow my spirit here. And so really, Scripture shows us person after person who was used of God. And the reason so many times is because they were just fearless. Just fearless. They would step out. Abraham stepped out not knowing where he's going. Amen. Peter stepped out on the water fearlessly. Of course, he got into fear and began to sink. But at the beginning, he began, he began to walk on water. You just see over and over again how people were bold. And uh, because of their boldness, they uh, dared to do something nobody else dreamed of doing or thought was possible. I mean, Joshua said that he's, got, he's in a battle, and he needed a, the, the, the sun to shine a little longer. And he said, sun, stand still. Yeah. Whoa. It's probably the gift of faith. <laughs> but, but my point is, that's bold. David ran toward Goliath. Goliath said, what am I, a dog that you sent? You know, a dog that you sent a little guy like this out here? And David said, I'm going to take your head off of you today. And didn't draw back. He just kept moving towards him. 
You know? That, that's bold. And all these people, you just, you just, that's why we love them so much. <laughs> just love them so much. And so that's what the Bible is. It's the book of the bold. And uh, they dared do something that other people didn't think was possible. And you, many people today would call them radical. But, but radicals are the ones that change the world. Radicals are the ones that move in the supernatural. Radicals are the ones that tap into the power of God. And God's looking for some radicals. Amen. And so uh, there were, in the Acts 4, the, uh, the leaders of the nation there in Acts 4 put Peter and John and the apostles on trial. And, you know, we're telling them, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus. And it reads in verse 8 and in verse 13 that Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost and, and said some things to him real bold. They said, hey, if we're being examined today uh, for this good deed done unto this man in the name of Jesus, be it known unto you that if you're going to tell us not to preach anymore in the name of Jesus, we ought to obey God rather than men. Yeah. And the, the guys they're talking to can put him in jail, do whatever they want to with him. Most people would be, well, listen, let's just, just let this calm down here a little bit. We'll just compromise and say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work something out with you, you know, and you know, we don't want to offend anybody and so forth and so on. You know, we'll just calm it down a little bit. We won't say Jesus. We'll just say God, you know, and, and you know, come on. You know, so many people today, I, I wish a Merry Christmas. And I haven't had one say back to me, Merry Christmas. All of them say, Happy Holidays, because they're afraid. We need some people that are bold. I say, Merry Christmas, because his name's in there. And that's what this is about, you know. <laughs> Amen. I'll just go one step further. Right now, I've been praying for President Trump, wisdom and so forth, but God added something to me. He said, begin to pray for boldness. Because what he's got to do is going to take some boldness. So I've been saying, Lord, give him boldness. Just give him boldness. If the, if the advisors are telling him don't, but he knows in his heart he's got to do it, give him boldness. Because we need some bold actions right now. We need some bold actions. So I've been on this in my personal time with the Lord, and uh, I just want to share with you a little bit about it tonight, about boldness. Uh, but when Peter and John were uh, on trial, and they boldly said these things to the apostles, I mean, they, they uh, you know, and they, the, when, the, when the leaders of the nation saw how fearless they were, Remember they said, the Bible said they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And they thought, you guys are, because it says when they saw they were unlearned and ignorant men. That just means they didn't have an education. They're just fishermen. Um, you know, they're not doctors of the law. They're not somebodies. They're not heads of universities and educated people and, you know, the civilized and the, the uh, cultured and the refined. I mean, who knows? Peter could have been in there picking fish bones out of his teeth when he's talking. Say, are you telling us not to preach in the name of Jesus? Uncivilized and uncouth. And the, the other guys are looking down their nose at him lowly fishermen but they get their finger out with boldness and say we're going to obey God rather than men whoa you talk to us like that that reminds me of somebody else we had on trial Jesus I remind, I re and they remembered took knowledge of them they had been with Jesus they're on trial yet they're giving edicts as if they're the king you know this is what we're going to do we're going to keep on preaching whether you tell us to or not, we're going to keep on preaching. And this is how it's going to work out. You want to hear how it's going to work out? There's going to be signs following. And we're going to do more. You're upset about this man being raised over here, this crippled man at the gate called Beautiful. That's why you brought us in here. But listen, this, we're not stopping because of you. And that's what we need in our culture today. 
I'm watching Americans. I'm watching Christians in America. In the last nine to ten months, they have changed and don't even realize they've changed. They're afraid. They got a spirit of fear on them, and it's time for us to stand up and say, not here, not me. I'm not afraid of disease. I'm not afraid of, of government, unconstitutional government. I'm not afraid of mobs. I'm not afraid of you calling me names. I'm not afraid of you calling me a racist. I'm not afraid of you calling me whatever you want to call me. I love everybody, I, and I am not who you say I am, and I will stand for what I believe. And people go, what? See, we're not afraid of them. Tell your neighbor the Bible is still being written. <laughs> I don't mean we're adding to the canon of Scripture. I'm just simply saying the book of Acts was all that Jesus began to do and teach, and the book of Acts is still being written. I mean, signs and wonders are still being done. And guess who's going to do it? Yeah, yeah, you're getting it. The bold. The bold. So that's, that's the, those are the people. Uh, you read in, uh, in, when it came to Stephen, when he was being stoned, well, actually, before he was stoned, he preached a sermon to those guys that, that basically just went, went right down the line and told all the history of Israel and how then Jesus came on the scene, and then he said, and you crucified him. God raised him from the dead. Boy, they didn't like that. But, they, they, and, uh, <laughs> but it was the truth. People don't like the truth today. But I love it when people get on the news and tell the truth. I love it. Say that louder. Say it again. <laughs> People need to hear it. Amen. All through uh, Jesus and the apostles' ministry in the New Testament, religious leaders of the day were shocked with wide-eyed disbelief at the sight of mere Galileans and carpenters or lowly fishermen saying or doing things with new boldness and authority that they were not used to. Amen. Over and over again, it's stated about the religious re leaders whenever they heard them preach. And uh, they said of Jesus, for example, never a man spoke like this man. They saw the same boldness in Jesus' disciples. They took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Ephesians 3.12 is telling you, in Him you've been given the same divine Holy Ghost, fire-breathing boldness. You, you, in Christ. That's what Ephesians 3.12 is saying. In whom we have boldness. Tell, tell your neighbor, that's me. And, we, and that's one thing, in other words, we got in the new birth. Isn't that right? In other words, somebody said, well, yeah, but that's not my personality. This is not about personality. It's about the new birth. In the new birth. In, in whom? When you got, came into him, you're born again. You got this boldness. You got this boldness. I sometimes, uh, I've seen this in a couple, I've seen this in Miss Jan back here. She's, she's embarrassed. I point her out. But, you know, a uh, uh, sweet grandma, you think she wouldn't hurt a fly. I bet, I bet she has trouble swatting a fly in her house. She's so tender-hearted and doesn't want to hurt that fly, you know. Just, she's so sweet. But when it comes to sharing Jesus with people in the grocery line or the neighbors, you ought to hear her stories. And she just gets bold about it. See, it's not about personality. It's not about, well, that's just not. No, it's about power, and knowing that power is backing you up. Yeah. 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 Miss, Miss Ann here, she helps us with pastoral care, and sometimes she has to get pretty straight with folks. I didn't say mean or rude, but see, in the flesh, you can try to put this on, and it'll get, it'll get, it'll get uh, rude and unkind and stuff like that, but uh, when it's of the Holy Ghost, it's not really rude. It just makes people go, Whoa, you're telling the truth all right. And I've seen Miss Ann get bold. 
You know, what is she, four foot nine or something like that? And <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's taller than that. But, but I mean, I'm just saying she comes in a small package, but man, sometimes whenever she's talking to people, their hair's going back like this. They're like, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I walk in the back and just laugh. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. This tells us in this verse there's such a thing as divine boldness. Amen. God wants you to know about it. This is not about your personality. It's something that is divine. It's something of your new nature, not your natural makeup. Amen. And just like everything else, though, that comes in the new birth, you've got to feed it and stir it for it to come to fullness. You understand that? <clears throat> Amen? And so it's part of your new, new spiritual nature. Uh, it's what boldness is. If you read the scriptures, you find in 1 John 4, 17 and 18. In fact, let's just go to that one just so you see at least one of these scriptures. Um, because this will bring this out. 1 John 4, verses 17 and 18. This is in relation to uh, prayer before God. But this is boldness. One, one thing we need to learn is that boldness is necessary in the presence of God, in the presence of demons, in the presence of people, and just to obey God generally. It takes boldness. You, get, you need to examine your life in all those areas. Am I bold in prayer in the presence of God? And I didn't say rude, but bold. The Bible said that's an element of a successful prayer life. First John, I mean uh, Hebrews, it says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain. That's an element of a successful, fruitful prayer life. So we need to examine, are we, are we bold when it comes to prayer? Are we bold when it comes to demons? You know, and dealing with them, or do we back up? Amen. I don't know how many people saw it, but about two weeks ago, whatever it was, three weeks, no, it wasn't three weeks ago, but the devil was cast out of a person right here in church. I tried not to draw attention to it. Some of you noticed it. But, and I, because, you know, I don't want to draw attention to the, don't want to embarrass the person, but, but, uh, Whenever I was ministering to that person, I knew, oh, there's more here. Yeah, I sensed that. And I jumped, you, some of you saw it, I jumped on it. Yeah. You, get, you get out of there. Yep, that's right. yep. get out. Amen. Not, not well, what are we going to do, the devil, the... No, bold. Bold. Yep. bold. Yep. bold. Amen. 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 What is boldness? It's, it's fearlessness. Yeah. Uh, look at 1 John here. 1 John 4, 17 and 18. It tells us something. Herein is the love of God. He, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. So notice He uses the term bold, or boldness, and fearlessness, we could put it that way, no fear means fearlessness, interchangeably. That's what boldness is, it's fearlessness. Amen. It's fearlessness. Amen. Boldness means if you're bold, you're fearless. That's why David ran towards Goliath and not away from him because he was fearless. The Bible said that the rest of the army of Israel was shaking in their boots for 40 days. Goliath would come out there and make a threat every day. And the Bible said their hearts failed them for fear. But David had been meditating in the Word of God. Let me tell you where boldness comes from. It comes from being full. Number one, full of the Word. Number two, full of the Holy Ghost. When you're full of the Word, David had been meditating on the covenant. He had been meditating on the Word out there on the backside of the, the farm, tending to the sheep. And uh, the Bible said that his, in his law, he was meditating day and night, Psalm 1. And he was so full of the Word that whenever Goliath made his threats, he was fearless in the presence of that, that threat. And that gave him the boldness to not draw back like everybody else, but to move forward towards Goliath. Amen. You read it. Whenever Goliath made a threat, David began to answer him and ran. Not, not walked, ran towards Goliath. He was probably, David was probably half his height. Maybe less. But probably about half his height. <laughs> That's divine. That's supernatural. But it's a result of fullness. 
And we'll get into that. That's, that's, but see, I just wanted you to see here, that's what boldness is. It's fearlessness. Hallelujah. And you can look at Philippians 1.14. There's another verse there that talks about boldness is fearlessness. But um, boldness is being full of courage. Remember God told Joshua, I'm going to make you the leader. Now, be strong and very courageous. If you're going to be a leader, you need to be bold and strong. So that's all another definition for it is being courageous. Does it help you to understand and define it? Uh, boldness is faith in full manifestation. When you know that you know, you'll be bold. In fact, I'll be honest with you, boldness is an intolerance of unbelief. Now, primarily an intolerance for it on the inside of you. You know, you can get harsh on other people and it wouldn't be right sometimes. But there's times the Holy, the Holy Ghost will get strong on you to deal with other people sometimes. What are you thinking? You can do that. Why are you drawing back? And you can do it in love. See, boldness doesn't mean you get out of love. Anyway, that's, there's a whole lot more we could say about that. But boldness really is faith in full manifestation. It's what happens when a man moves from mere head knowledge of the principles of faith over into a spirit of faith. And God needs people that have a spirit of faith. Boldness is what brings a man into an encounter with the power of God. Because <laughs> the anointing meets boldness. <clears throat> it's not just those who believe, it's those who act that encounter the power of God. Praise God. Drawing back in fear and hesitation never brings a man into an encounter with the power of God. Amen. Faith breeds boldness. It's not just faith in the heart, though. We're talking about, you know, you've got to have it in your heart. It begins, boldness begins on the inside. We understand that. But yet, right on the other hand, it's a part of the life of a man who has a spirit of faith. And the spirit of faith is acting on what you know and what you believe. Boldness is the result of fullness. Being full of the Word makes you bold. Because when you're full of the Word, you're, you know that you know. You know God is faithful. You know He'll back you up. You know when you step out, He'll be there. The power will meet you. You know. You're sure. Somebody t said one time, I'm past believing it, and I'm to the point of knowing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, we know what they're saying, don't we? Boldness is the result of fullness. But it's the fullness of the Word, yes, but fullness of the Spirit. Amen. You know, you need to be full of the Word when it comes to prayer. So that before God, you're not wishy-washy and wavering, but you know what your rights are. And uh, then, not just full of the Word concerning what you're praying about, but full of the Word concerning the standing you have in prayer. In other words, the right you have to stand before God and make your petition. Uh, we could say a lot about that. But um, I've noticed that there, there's people sometimes who have faith all right. And, uh, but because they don't practice, because I said boldness is the result of fullness. Uh, and we'll see that here in a minute about, uh, you know, being sure. Because, well, being sure, the Word makes you sure. But then being filled with the Holy Ghost makes you bold. I'll just give you the reference. We already quoted it. Maybe it's, it's Acts 4, verse 8, and then verse 13. You can read all the way through there, but especially verse 8 and 13. It said, Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, answered and said unto them. And then it says, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. So he was answering very bold, very confident, not, not you know, wondering, what am I going to do here? Am I going to obey God, or am I going to listen to them? You know, they, he was just sure, sure about there was no question what he was going to do. He had already decided that. And uh, so whenever, they, whenever he was full of the Holy Ghost, he became bold. You can get full of the Word, and that will make you bold. And then sometimes the Holy Ghost coming on you will make you bold. Like Peter, the Holy Ghost came on him. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost and waxed real bold. I know some people that uh, they... They have faith all right, and they have the Word all right. 
But because they don't practice the biblical instructions of being continually filled with the Holy Ghost, you understand what I'm talking about? They sort of have a dead faith. No life in it. You know, I say it this way sometimes. They got, they got the word in them like, like uh, you know, a woman carries a child in her, but that word's not kicking. Like a, a child that's really live and growing and everything, he's in there, he kicks every now and then. Isn't that right? And I ask some preachers, is your baby still kicking? You look kind of dry. You look kind of empty. Look like you're getting old quicker than you're getting old. You know what I'm talking about? Just looking at your face. Just looking at how you stooped over, you know. You're just looking how you're weak. Just looking. Where's your spirit of faith? Where's your, where's your fullness of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Why is your faith confession so dry like a corpse's bones has been dead for 15 years, you know? Well, we're, we're believing we're healed, you know. But they never see the power of God. Sounds like faith, but it's not been filled with the Holy Ghost for a long time. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about or not. And the absence of the miraculous power of God in their life is the absence, not of faith, but the absence is uh, this thing that is absent is boldness. And if they'd get continually filled with the Holy Ghost, they'd get bold. Because the Bible said, don't be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be continually filled with the Spirit. The, the word there in the Greek means continually filled with the Spirit. <laughs> and just like alcohol in the natural is liquid confidence, getting full of the Holy Ghost, gets your, it'll get you past yourself, you know. Well, my personality, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of shy and sort of holds me back. You get full of the Holy Ghost, it'll turn you into another man. It'll knock that timidity out of you. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. It'll make you not draw back anymore. <laughs> fear causes people to draw back. And you know fear has formed a lot of people's personalities? I tried that on the Lord one time, told him it wasn't my personality and a move, a move of the Spirit. I wasn't getting in. I said, this, he said, is this my Spirit? I said, yeah, I knew it was the Holy Ghost. He said, why aren't you getting in? Getting in? Then I said, it's not my personality. Don't, let me just tell you ahead of time. Don't ever try that on the Lord. I'll tell you ahead of time. You get in trouble trying that on the Lord. I said, it's not my personality. Now, this was years ago. He answered me with something that was low blow. He said, yeah, and your personality was basically formed by unbelief. Yeah, it did hurt. I went, oh. Yeah, I knew exactly what he was talking about. I knew how I was brought up. I knew how I was trained to act in church. <laughs> well, so don't ever try that on the Lord because it won't work. Come on, tell me I'm preaching all right. The bolder you are, the more results you're going to get. Amen. Because power meets boldness, not timidity. And you can even know the Word. You can have poured it in for years and know the Word. And have on a head full of knowledge of it. Amen. But it's boldness that enables you to act on that knowledge. That taps into the power of God. You know, the Bible said that uh, Peter and John used the name of Jesus. They got in trouble there for raising that man that the crippled at, at the gate called Beautiful. They got in trouble for raising him from, the, from his crippled condition. That's what they were on trial for when they said, stop preaching in the name of Jesus. They said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The man was healed in chapter 3. They pulled him in in, in, in chapter 4 to put him on trial and tell him, don't preach in that name anymore because that miracle got a whole bunch of people saved and stirred everybody up in Jerusalem. And see, now the Jews are losing control of the masses, and now they're all going to Jesus, and so they got to stop that, you know. <laughs> Amen. So they told him, don't preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Well, the reason, they, the reason they, uh, that man was healed at the gate, beautiful, was because the Bible said uh, 
that they used the name. That name, through faith in his name, had made this man whole, it says. And they said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Remember? They used the name. Well, they knew the authority in that name whenever they walked up there. But how many of you know it takes boldness to not just walk by with the knowledge that the name will raise him up? But stop and use the name. That takes boldness. You can have knowledge of something and not have the boldness to act on it and never see the power of God. <laughs> like I said, the, the absence of the miraculous is sometimes not the absence of power or the absence of privilege. It's the absence uh, of the uh, boldness to act on what we know. Come on, tell your, your neighbor, we're, t we're bold in in Christ. Amen. So tell your neighbor, I'm going to go ahead and, and never draw back anymore. Somebody said, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? What, what if it does? Where do you think that thought comes from? What if it doesn't work? Boldness defies that kind of thing. Praise God. Amen. So you can have knowledge and not act on it, and it won't tap into the power of God. You, you can have uh, faith for something even and not have the boldness to step out on that faith, and then you'll never enjoy what you could have had. It's not about, let me say it this way, it's not just about faith. It's about boldness. Amen. Faith is the equipment you need to get the job done. But bo if you don't use boldness and don't step out and use that faith, then you won't have the job done. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. How many of you don't want to get to heaven and hear what you could have had if you'd have just been bolder? Yeah. If you'd have just obeyed me. If you'd have just stepped out. You'd have had miracles that I intended for you, but you short-circuited them because you drew back. Well, what are people going to think? Oh, they're going to think something anyhow. I got to the place that uh, I joined Pastor Nancy's club. Pastor Nancy joined the club. It's a I don't give a royal rip club. <laughs> she was the first member, and I was probably the second or third. I just like, that's my club. I'm joining that club. When it comes to what other people think, that's what we're talking about. They already think we're off our rocker anyway. You know. You know, but there's a lot of bold people out there, in, in, even in our society, that people persecute and criticize, maybe not even for the gospel, maybe just because of their press into business or something, or whatever it might be. And people, they, they criticize them and so forth, but secretly, they're jealous. Yeah, they, man, I wish I had that kind of boldness. I wish I had that kind of go for it. Well, I'm leaving right after this. Amen. Boldness is faith that's free from fear. If failure was never, ever able to happen, what would you do? Amen. Now, let's talk a little bit about more about the Holy Ghost coming on you and making you bold. You getting anything out of this? We're not going to go a whole lot longer here. Peter... In Acts 4, verse 8, the Holy Ghost came. Go, go there and look at it. I want you to see it. Just because just I read it, maybe that's not good if we don't turn to it. Maybe it would be best. Acts 4, look at verse, starting in verse 8. This is right after they told him, don't turn, verse 7. Um, By what power, what name have you done this? Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people, elders of Israel, if we this day be examined for the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he's made whole, be it known unto you all, and to the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Notice he got his finger out there and put it in their face. You crucified him. Raised him from the dead, even, as, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is said not you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is the salvation in any other, none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. 
People hear that today and they get mad. But verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, they saw their boldness. Boldness, they, listen, it takes boldness to say some things. People today are drawing back from saying what needs to be said, even in our culture, because people are threatening, well, we're not going to do business with you then. Or we're going to call you names, or, or we're going to label you, or we're going to send a mob to your house, sir. Listen, if we give in to that, that's the end of America. I'm not saying taunt people. I'm just saying don't change. I love something. There was a politician that put out a message about a certain company. I think it's Goya or something. That told them don't buy any more of their products because of this. I don't even know why they were telling them that. Was it because they were accusing them of being racist or something? I don't remember what it was. And they, they sold so much more product. It was, like, it was like 50 times more product or something. That they made that politician that said that employee of the month. I like that. That's bold. They put it on the internet. We make this politician employee of the month because our sales have gone so high. Love it. Love it. Want some more of it. That makes you want to stand up and say, proud to be an American. <laughs> That's an American. That's a patriot right there that, that said, hey, we're not backing down just because you called us a name. Now, I don't believe in taunting people, but I do believe in just staying the course, obeying God rather than obeying men. Amen. So I said it takes boldness to say some things. Uh, because I'll tell you why. Because God needs m some people on the earth to say some things so that he can perform it. Yeah. God needs people to say it so he'll do it, so he can do it. And the bolder we get, whether we be laymen or ministers or whatever we're doing, uh, the bolder we get, the more God can show up. Hallelujah. The more we do what he tells us to do, the more we say what he tells us to say, the more miracles we're going to see. There's a man, I love this guy. He's he, my pillow guy, the Mike Lindell guy. I think that's his name. He, he's, he's got a bold testimony because he was delivered from drugs way back there before he started the business of making pillows and stuff. And, uh, and, and he never shies back from telling his testimony. He's, he's bold about it. He's not in your face about it. He's just, he's just so happy about it, so thrilled about it, and, and is not ashamed to tell people about it. And people say, let's, let's uh, what's, what do they call that, uh, boycott him and all of that, and he keeps on selling more and more pillows. Love it. Love it. Let's have all good Christians get out there and tell the truth about what God did for them. We ought to back this spirit of fear out of America. Come on, tell your neighbor he's preaching pretty good all right already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do you get there? You get full of the Word and stay full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And uh, the Holy Ghost is liquid confidence. When, when people drink in the natural, their uh, natural inhib inhibitions are no longer dominating them, uh, and they do things or say things that they normally wouldn't do or say. Now, I'm not, I'm not pro a proponent of this, but here's what I'm, let me give you an illustration. A guy can be fearful to ask a girl out. But you get him a little drunk on alcohol, he'll go, hey, hey, honey. Why don't we go over to the restaurant, you know, and hey. I like you, you know. But before he was under the influence, he's shy. He doesn't want to ask her out. Get a clue. <laughs> you draw back from sharing Jesus with people, but if you get drunk enough, you're like, hey, do you know what he's done for me? <laughs> yeah. 
and you won't turn the Christian music off when you get to the with, when you get to the drive-through line. And and come on, you know what I'm talking about? And when you're at the stoplight speaking in tongues, yeah, cut I must, and you look over and somebody's looking at you, you go, hey, come on, I'm so proud to be to be. Hey, hey, way, say <laughs> <laughs> See, we're hitting home. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> Glory to be, be to God. Now, so here's Peter getting bold, isn't that right? Why? He's full of the Holy Ghost. I said he's full. So the more you're under the influence of the Spirit... The, the more your natural disposition and makeup sort of goes out the window. And you end up doing things under the influence of the Spirit. You know, telling, testifying, laying hands on people. That your natural makeup would hold you back from. Glory be to God. Now, you got to realize that just a couple of chapters before this, I mean, I know this is Acts, but if you just back up into Luke and just, just the, as the story progresses through the end of the book of Luke and over into Acts, if you go back just a couple of chapters, Luke, I mean, uh, it's recorded that Peter at Jesus' crucifixion was asked, I think you're one of them, a little girl, a, a small, a, 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 who knows, maybe, maybe how old she was. It says a young girl. You're one of them. One of the Galileans, you were with him. Oh, I never knew him. I never knew him. I, and Peter denied it, isn't that right? He can't even witness and testify to a young girl that he belongs to Jesus. Jesus is crucified, and the, uh, the, the leaders of the nation are all upset at this movement, and so they are probably got their eyes out for other people. From that story, must have been there looking for other ones that were following him and so forth. And Peter, after the crucifixion, he's hiding behind closed doors for fear of the leaders of the of the, of the nation. And yet here he is putting his finger in these people's face and said, you crucified him and we're not going to stop preaching his name because it's in his name that this man was made whole. There's no other name under the heaven whereby salvation can come. What changed our little preacher? What changed our little preacher? He's not the little preacher anymore. He's bold. Something happened. I'll tell you what happened. He got full of the Holy Ghost. And not just once. He got full on the day of Pentecost. He got full in chapter 4. He got full a couple of different times you can read in there. Hallelujah. I did it. I preached myself happy. Tell your neighbor, go ahead and say amen, because it's all true. Glory be to God. <laughs> Let me just wrap this up by saying this. This aspect of boldness being, uh, you know, being bold, uh, staying full of the Holy Ghost and staying bold because of it is also a reason people are bold in prayer as well. And we, we're going to spend some more time. We spent some time on this last Wednesday night. Uh, but under the influence of the Spirit, you become, uh, uh, the more you're under the influence of the Spirit, the bolder you get in the presence of God. Um, as you study divine boldness, God's will is that you be bold in God's presence in prayer. Be bold in the presence of demons, unafraid of demons. And be bold in the presence of people. The Bible said, the fear of man bringeth a snare. We're not to be afraid of people, what they think. I don't believe in taunting people, but I don't believe in compromising my convictions. Uh, and then we're bold to obey what the Spirit of God tells us to do. Now, when it comes to prayer... Uh, you, once again, boldness is because we, of what we know. And it's also because of fullness, fullness of the Word, fullness of the Spirit. And so uh, when it comes to this fullness in the presence of God, with, with this boldness in the presence of God, we're called to be fearless to ask. The Bible said, come boldly to obtain. Amen. And so uh, at these times, you can become... Uh, you can become, like Finney mentioned, his time in for prayer. Charles Finney would be a man of prayer who would pray for the, the move of the Spirit. And then uh, he said, I would find myself uh, uh, talking to God in ways that indeed alarmed me. Finney was the most successful revivalist 
in history besides the Apostle Paul. Got more people saved uh, and, and more people not just saved but committed and walked with God for the rest of their life than any man in history besides the Apostle Paul. He had great success. And in some of his experiences, he said, it indeed alarmed me uh, how I would uh, talk to God. As some experiences in prayer, he said, that indeed alarmed me, referring to the boldness that he had talking to God. And he said that uh, he would find himself quoting Scripture after Scripture and putting God in remembrance of his word and pleading his case and saying, God, now you don't think we're not going to have revival here in this city, do you? He said, it indeed alarmed me. But what was happening was Finney was full of the word. And as he took that word to God in prayer and acted on it in faith, claiming his rights, he, the, the anointing would come on him to bless and anoint him to ask in the presence of God. And that anointing through the word getting into him and then the spirit coming in and blessing that would take him into deeper realms of the spirit and uh, in all reality, the further a man goes in the Spirit, he might start out in faith or start out just out of his mind, acting on the Word. But as he yields to the Word and yields to his faith and speaks the Word in faith, the Holy Ghost will come and start blessing that. And he'll move you over into the Spirit. And you'll start acting differently than you would have in your natural makeup. Are you with me? And you'll wax bold under that anointing because the Holy Spirit will come help you pray. Romans 8 said he'll help you pray. Often the further we go in the Spirit when we are in prayer, the more bold we become. We begin to flash the true colors of our spiritual nature and of our rightful position with Him because we are less under the influence of the thoughts of our natural mind at the moment and more under the influence of the reality of our right standing before God in prayer. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know if you heard that, that and caught that, but get the CD or get, you know, listen to this and go back over. Because the Spirit of God says, the Bible says in the, in the Word of God, Romans 8, He'll help us to pray. Yes. And He'll help you get bold. Yes. Yes. Not in the flesh. It's because, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't even say some of the things you're going to say. Just like Finney, it indeed alarmed me some of the experience I had in prayer. He'd get over into the Spirit, and the anointing would come on him, and he'd ask things and say things that uh, it really alarmed him. In fact, when he got back out of prayer, he's like, oh, my goodness, talking to God like that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We need to learn some things about that. I said, we need to learn some things about this. Where it's not just in tongues, but actually in English. We pray under the anointing of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You remember uh, Abraham. He pled his case. Now he said, far be it from the judge of all the earth that he would destroy the, right, the righteous with the wicked. Slap your own mouth. I mean, there's things if you get over into the Spirit that you'll find yourself saying in the presence of God that you would, when you get back out of it, you're like, Oh my goodness, I wouldn't, I wouldn't in my natural mind ever think to say something like that. Amen. Amen. Because you're more under the influence of the Spirit at the time than your own, your own natural mind, and you start flashing the true colors of your real nature. You start, you start taking on that standing that, that you have in His presence. The, the rights that you have because of righteousness, because of covenant, because of the Word that you have in covenant. Hallelujah. I remember praying one time, and I was in the car. I wasn't even on my knees praying about a need. You can stand with, with me. I'm, I'm finished. But I was praying, and I had a need, a big financial need. And I started pleading my case. And I pulled on to 380. I used to live down in North Liberty. Well, well Coralville, but right, right on the line of North Liberty. Came down the line of North Liberty, came up there in North Liberty, got on the highway, and uh, started pleading my case. I said, Lord, now... And I started, I started telling the Lord, reminding the Lord of all His covenant rights, all my covenant rights that He gave me. And then, and then the Holy Ghost started coming on me. And then I, started, I said, Lord, whenever you told me to do this, I did it. When you told me to do that, I did it. And, uh, and, then, and, and, and the Holy Ghost just started reminding me of things. 
And I prayed that way less than 10 minutes. I don't think it was 10 or 15 minutes. Got a phone call. The answer is met just like that. Amen. Glory be to God. I thought to myself, some of the things I said, in fact, to this day, I don't even remember all of them. I know some of them had to do with the daycare. Because it wasn't coming out of my mind, it's coming out of my spirit. But I'm pleading my case. Some things I wouldn't even have thought to say. Glory be to God. He'll help you. He's our helper.